ways to use candlestick patterns in trading. So candlesticks by themselves, if you're to strip off everything from the chart, all the indicators that you use and all the other stuff that's on there and just look at price action, whether it's a five minute chart, a 10,000 tick chart, whatever you want to use, as long as the candlesticks have a variable open, high, low and close, you can use them just to confirm your position or your direction on a trade. And they can actually tell you a huge amount of information just looking at the candlesticks. So taking a look at the candlesticks, there's a couple different ways you can look at them. Yes, you can use patterns like dojis and haramis and all these different candlestick patterns. But in reality, if you break it down and you look at the candlestick patterns themselves, it really comes down to looking at candlesticks in basically two different ways. You either have a trending candle or a non-trending candle. And that's really all you have. Yes, if you combine a couple of them, you can have, you know, uh, ranges of consolidation or, you know, a few different areas like that. But in reality, looking at candlestick patterns, they're either trending or non-trending candles. And that's really all there are. Uh, you know, you can add whatever fancy name you want on them, um, but it's not necessarily the name of the candlestick that makes it important. More so where, you know, the open, high, low and closes end up on those uh, actual candles. So taking a look at a couple examples here of candlestick patterns, you really want to find when you're getting into a position, whether it's long or short, you want a candlestick that confirms your direction. So if you're looking to get short, you want a bearish confirmation candle, or if you're looking to get long, you want a bullish confirmation candle. You don't want to go long against a bearish confirmation candle because that doesn't make any sense. So as an example, looking back a little bit earlier here on crude oil, we can see a few things happened here. Uh, you know, we had this little bit of a sell-off that kind of came down and brought prices a little bit lower here, where then prices were picked back up off of these lows. And there's a lot of clues that this was going to happen. Uh, along the way down, when we started reaching into these highs here, we had a lot of wicks on the highs. And we could see that every time the bulls started coming in and really trying to drive price higher, it was rejected. Now, along with that, in this area up at the top here, we also had a lot of wicks at the lows. And that gives us another big heads up that this is more just kind of a, a consolidation area. We're not really trending. Uh, in reality, we're not really going anywhere as of yet. But if we look at this area here and we zoom in a little bit on it here, we can do a couple things with this. And let me get my crosshair out of the way. There we go. So we can do a few things with this area. Now, we moved into this consolidation area pretty much after this candle formed. And from there, we just basically chopped around for a little while. Now, what we can do with this area is called candlestick math. And you can crunch these candlesticks together to try to figure out in the long term how this actually looks. And the way to do that is just to simply add up the beginning point and the end point and just combine them into one big candlestick. So as an example, the open was right here on that bullish candle that came across. The close, when we started actually breaking out of this consolidation area, it was really this one right here, was that candle. You could also argue that candle, uh, even this candle down here if you wanted to, uh, but really the first candle that really dug out of this consolidation and stuck was this one right there. So what we'll do is we'll use that candle's close, and we'll just draw a box from that close to our open line, and now we've got the body of the candle. So if you were to fill this in with, say, red, because the open and the close, uh, the way that this actually trended in direction is a bearish candle. So this whole inside of this candle will just be a big red candle right here. So we'll just fill that in with red to make it easier there. Now, along with that, uh, looking at the overall move itself, we also have wicks, right? Candlesticks have highs, lows, opens, and closes. So we need to measure the highs as well. So we'll go from the middle of it, and we'll just go up to the high point of the wick, which happened back there. So that's the wick high. And if we look on the lows, it was really just that one low down there. So we can just draw a wick to the lows down there. And now what we're left with, if we zoom out a little bit, is a bearish candle. Yes, this area was a full area of consolidation, but the tendency of that entire area or direction was bearish. And that gave us a big heads up that we should expect to see price react similarly to the fact that we didn't really have a whole lot of wick on the bottom, a lot of wick on the top, and we're seeing rejection from the sellers at these highs. We should see price fall off from that location. So yes, even though this whole area was an area of consolidation, we could see that ahead of time, we would expect prices to fall more so than rise. 
Now, as we fell down here, what did we start to see? We had a couple bearish trending candles. And what I mean by bearish trending candles is something like this, where there's not really a lot of wick. Uh, if you're going to have wick, it'd, much be, it'd be preferred to be on the top side uh, for a bearish candle. And you don't want to see much wick on the lows because it's a bearish candle. We want to see it close as close to possible in the lows. Uh, a perfect example of this is this candle right there. We have absolutely no wick on the lows, a little bit of wick on the highs, and we closed right right down at the bottom. So that's a perfect bearish candle. And that's a trending candle because we close towards the lows. An example of a non-trending candle would be something like this, where we've got a decent amount of wick at the top, a large amount of wick at the bottom. Yes, we did close bearish. Uh, there was a bearish tendency to this move, but it's really just a bearish non-trending candle. Just an area of consolidation, maybe a little bit of profit taking, but that's about it. There's not really any decisiveness in those moves. And then as we started to fall again, we followed that up with a bearish continuation candle and then a doji. So more indecision, more confusion. And we started to break down to these lows again. What did we have? We have more indecision. This is basically just a giant spinning top or a, a big doji, you know, big wick on the bottom, big wick on the top, not really giving us a lot of direction. And the same goes for that candle, that candle, that candle, that candle, that candle. We can see that there's a lot of indecision at these lows. And every time the buyers or the sellers come in, we're really not getting a whole lot. So we can use that to give us kind of a heads up because the following candle that really broke out of that range, look at that bullish trending candle. No wick on the lows, no wick on the highs, fully, completely green. Very bullish indication that we're rejecting that area. Now, that doesn't necessarily just give you a heads up that, okay, well, I'm just going to buy there. There are times where that doesn't work, as we can see back here on this candle here. This is a very bullish candle, but we knew that in context, we had a lot of bearishness happening here as well. So you don't just want to take the candlestick by itself. That's usually not a good way to get into a trade. But as an example, we had this bullish move higher, followed up with a little bit more indecision, right? We have another spinning top. We've got wick on the top, wick on the bottom. Yes, it had a bullish tendency to it, but really there wasn't a lot of direction there. It's just a non-trending bullish candle, followed up with a non-trending bearish candle. But to confirm this move higher here, this big bullish candle, look what happened after this non-trending bearish candle formed. We had another massive bullish candle to the upside. We triggered in the shorts here, and there was nothing but really a fake out. And then all of a sudden, we have this gigantic bullish candle to the upside, closes very near its highs with a lot of wick towards the lows. It's a, it's a bullish continuation candle. We know that's a trending candle to the upside, and we would expect price to react similarly so that it moves back to the upside again. So it follows along with that kind of idea. So use that when you're looking to get into trades. You want to be able to see those kinds of areas where, you know, maybe you're in a short trade and you're starting to see, you know, something like we have down here where it's not looking very good to the downside. Maybe you want to tighten your stop up a little bit or even consider taking a portion of your trade off. The market is giving you a huge heads up regardless of what the indicators say. Price action gives you pretty much everything you need in terms of just this style of trading where it's giving you a big heads up that you probably shouldn't be short, or if you are short, maybe not so heavy anymore. Uh, same with going to the upside when you hit these big areas in consolidation here. We can do the same thing that we did over here with this area as well. So really, we moved into this consolidation area, I mean, really right there, um, even the last burst up on this candle here. So as an example, we opened here. And then the candle that broke out of that consolidation and stuck is this candle right here. So we know that the close is down there. So we'll just match those up together. And now we have our body. So again, you can do the same thing. Just this one ended red because we opened higher than we closed. So we'll just fill this in with a little bit of red here. And now looking at the overall wicks on both sides, we have a wick at the bottom and a wick off of the highs all the way up here. And if we, zoom up, if we zoom out on this, we can see, just like we had before over here, a big heads up that even though, yes, this is an area of consolidation, we have a really big chance that we're most likely going to be falling out of this area rather than rising higher out of it. Just because of the way that if you add these all together, we can see that there's quite a bit of a bearish tone to this consolidation area. So it's just kind of a way that you can look in that kind of, you know, give yourself more confirmation of an actual trade, regardless of the pattern that you're looking for, whether it's a flag pattern or a wedge or, you know, whatever the pattern is, you can use these candlesticks to give you a big, big heads up. 
Uh, another good example right here, earlier today on crude oil, we had this gorgeous flag pattern set up. And you can see that flag just cutting right through there. And we know that this, by nature, is going to be a bullish flag pattern. Now, where would we enter this kind of, you know, this, this pattern itself? Using price action as a guide. Well, we know the highs of this area is through here, which means that the lows are, you know, somewhere around there. And then we've got the flag setting up there. If we're looking at the candlesticks, this one isn't really a very good candlestick to enter on. That's the start of it. That's more of a, a doji if, it, you know, if a spinning top. We've got a big doji here with lots of wick towards the bottom. Another spinning top, another spinning top. Uh, it is bearish, uh, and we did close negative, but you can see the amount of wick that we had at the lows here. There's quite a bit of bullishness in that bearish candle. And then the confirmation candle is this guy right here. Not very big candle. It doesn't have to be very big, but it, it depends on where it opens goes up to and goes down to and where it closes. And we can see here that if we were to draw this flag up, that does close outside of the flag, and it's a very bullish continuation or trending candle, right? We've got no wick on the highs. We've got a decent amount of wick at the lows, and it's all green, a very, very bullish continuation candle. And you can see it was followed up and met in that regard. It reacted very, very bullishly as soon as that broke out. So that's how you can use those different things to get into trades or confirm a trade that you may be looking at. Uh, and it, it can be a really reliable source just using that. And then when you combine that with a couple indicators, whether it's a moving average or you know a stochastic or whatever you enjoy using, it'll basically it'll just add a really big element of confirmation to that trade itself.